AI is everywhere. AI. AGI. Vibe coding. Agentic AI. Every day there's a new article, a new tool, a new headline. But most explainers are either too simple or they're so technical you need a PhD to understand them. I get it. I'm Jean. For 20 years, I've been working in tech from my early days at WhatsApp to leading engineering teams at Meta. And I'm here to simplify AI so you can stop feeling overwhelmed and start understanding what's next. By the end of this video, you'll understand more about AI than most people. A quick thanks to Warp for sponsoring a portion of this video, but more on them later. Let's start with the most basic question. What actually is AI? At its core, AI is about pattern recognition, teaching computers to make decisions based on data. Think about your email spam filter. It learns patterns from thousands of messages. So when a new one comes in, it decides spam or not spam. That's a broad idea of AI. But when we talk about how it learns those patterns, we get into machine learning. Imagine I teach you what a dog is, but only show you golden retrievers. Then I ask you to spot a chihuahua. You probably miss it as a dog. The machine learning is similar. If the training data is too narrow or not comprehensive enough, the results are not going to be reliable. If you want the machine to be able to identify all kinds of dogs, you need to give it better data. And then there's deep learning, a kind of machine learning that uses neural networks. Despite the name, they're not actually related to brains deep just means stacking many layers so the computer can learn from a lot of different examples. So how does this all fit together? Think of nested circles where AI is the biggest one. Inside that is NLP, robotics, computer vision, and machine learning. And inside of machine learning is deep learning, and today, when most people say AI, they're usually talking about generative AI, which is the smallest circle in this example. Generative AI can create new content like text, images, audio, and even video. The most famous example is what's called a large language model or LLM. Anything like ChatGPT, Google Gemini, or Claude are examples of LLM. They process and generate text, and the newest ones are multimodal, which means they can handle text, images, audio, and video all in one. But the thing about these AI tools is that they're only as good as the instructions you give them. So if you use the AI and the result felt too generic or just okay, it's usually because of how you're talking to it, which is called prompting. Most people treat AI like a search engine, type a few words, and hope for the best. But to really take advantage of these tools, prompting is key. It's like the art of giving clear, specific instructions to get the result you actually want. So you don't want to just say, make me an app. That's not very specific. Instead, you want to cover things like data and content. What type of data source would it use? This is basically where is the information coming from? Think about core functionality. What are the main features of the app? And visually, what should the layout look like? Or what style are you looking for in the app? Also add any technical requirements like should it remember things or refresh data. But there's also a new type of building which is called vibe coding, a term coined by Andre Kripathi. He describes it as a state where you fully give in to the vibes, embrace exponentials, and forget that code even exists. It sounds a little bit out there, but there are many tools that you can use to literally build apps in minutes just by describing what you want. If you want to try it out, here are some popular tools you can think about. There are tons of AI coding tools out there, but they really fall into two main categories. If you have no technical background, you can go with the no code tools like Lovable or Bolt. You just describe what you want in more high level and then they build it for you. This is perfect if you're not a developer, but you have a great app idea you want to test over a weekend or build a quick website for a local business. But if your goal is to build a more complex professional app for maybe millions of users, you may hit some limits. That's where the next category comes in, the coding assistant tools. These are for people who are more technical. Tools like Cursor or Cloud Code help engineers be more efficient with their coding by handling the repetitive stuff like suggesting code and helping them with debugging. These tools will help speed up your workflow. Now there's another contender in this space that's been really blowing up lately, and it's within the same realm as Cursor and Cloud Code called Warp. But unlike like cursor or cloud code, which only covers piece of the workflow, Warp brings together agents, IDE, and terminal all in one environment. Engineers can go from prompt to production seamlessly without switching
switching between these connected tools. Warp is designed where coding starts with a prompt and set up by hand. With their new release, Warp is a place where IDE and CLI finally merge into one seamless environment for coding with AI agents. If you're not familiar with this term AI agents, we'll get back to this in a bit, but here's what it means in practice. Warp combines three things into one. You start with the natural language prompt to describe what you want to build. Warp generates the code and you can jump directly into its built-in editor for reviews and tweaks. Then you deploy to production directly from the built-in terminal. You do this all in one single workflow. It works across full development cycles, manages multiple long running agents seamlessly and have native in-app editing so you don't have to constantly context switch between tools. And the performance backs it up. Warp ranks top three on Sweebench Verified and number one on Terminal Bench, which means it's really good at coding and very performant. Warp is free to use and you can try their premium features for just $1 your first month with code Gene. Link is in the description. Now back to the video. Now let's talk about AI agents, probably the hottest topic in AI right now. Unlike a chatbot that only responds to one prompt at a time, AI agents can work autonomously to achieve goals. So they can plan, reason, and take multiple steps to get things done for you. Think of it like an assistant. You could say, book me a trip to Seoul next month. And they could research flights, compare prices, check your calendar, find hotels, and even make bookings for you all without you having to ask for each step. These agents are powered by specialized large language models called reasoning models. These are models trained to solve problems step by step, kind of like showing your work in math class. When you see a chatbot pause and say it's thinking, that's the reasoning model working through the problem internally before giving you an answer. Behind the scenes, there are two other concepts worth knowing. First is RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, which is a technique that helps AI models avoid making things up. So instead of just relying on its internal training, the AI will first pull specific information from other sources like a document or a database. It then uses that fresh context to give you a more specific and more accurate answer. Second one is MCP, Model Context Protocol. This is like a universal adapter for AI systems. It lets different AI models and tools and databases to connect and share information more seamlessly. This means developers no longer have to build custom integration for every single connection, which makes creating AI agents much faster and easier. Together, these make AI systems a lot more powerful. Okay, so where is this all heading? Right now, we're working towards something called Artificial General Intelligence or AGI, which means the AI can do any thinking task a person can do as well as a person can do it. Beyond that, some people talk about artificial super intelligence ASI, like Meta recently named this lab Meta Super Intelligence Lab. This would be an AI that is even smarter than humans and can improve itself. And now this is where the debate gets interesting. On one side, you have the doomers who believe AGI is coming very, very soon, as soon as 2027, and it could end humanity. On the other side, you have skeptics who say AGI is pure fiction, it will never happen. And then on the extreme end, some some people say AGI is kind of like a modern day cult used by companies to sell products and raise billions of dollars. Karen Howe, the author of the book Empire of AI, compares it to the movie Dune. In the movie, Lady Jessica creates a myth to position her son as a messiah. Howe argues that the myth of AGI was similarly created to give the industry a purpose and control billions of dollars. And now it's a myth that a lot of people believe and distracts us from real important problems. If you want a deeper dive into the future of AI and the AGI debate, you can watch this video and I'll see you there.